This is Conversations with Women in Sales, an award-winning podcast created by Barbara Giamanco, who hosted the first 67 episodes. Listen to interviews with amazing women about their journeys in their sales careers, often discussing sales leadership tips, ideas, and strategies. We aim to inspire women to consider a sales career and for some women to grow into sales leadership. Men, we appreciate your allyship. And now, your host, Lori Richardson. A big thank you to our sponsor, Skillibrium, for their support of this podcast. Leave subjectivity aside with Skillibrium, where talent meets excellence and innovation to build the next generation of human-centric sales leaders and high-performing teams. I'm really excited today because we have a special guest, uh, Megan Ackerson. Megan is CHRO, Chief Human Resources Officer at Exactly. I'm going to let Megan explain who Exactly is, but I'm going to say that they've been a good partner in terms of women in sales research for some time, and I'll, we'll go into that in a minute. But Megan, welcome to Conversations with Women in Sales. We're really glad to have you here today. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate you having me here as well. I'm excited um, and looking forward to our conversation. Obviously, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, not only because I'm a, a female professional in the workforce, but I've got nieces, I've got, I've got a daughter, and I want to make sure that they have the same opportunities, if not more, than with that, what we've been able to experience. Yeah, that's great. Uh, exactly has really been championing this for a number of years and doing research through the data that gets curated. And we'll talk about that. Um, but first, tell us a little bit about you. You've been at exactly a little over two years, right? And you Correct. probably had some charter to look at gender in some way as part of what you do, correct? Yes, absolutely. So you're right on. I've been with exactly for two and a half years now. And very deliberately, I joined exactly for a number of different reasons. One is, of course, the obvious, which is having a belief in the product and the solutions and the marketability of exactly. But secondly, personally, well, there's a special place in my heart for founders and CEOs because my own grandparents were entrepreneurs as well. So I see and know how hard it is to start a business in the face of, and perhaps when others say it's too hard, can you really do it? So there's a uh, special place in my heart for companies with founder CEO, CEOs at the helm, and Chris Cabrera was at the helm at the time. And then the third piece is, it sounds cliche, but it is around about the people. I'm fortunate in my life where I can be very selective about where I work, what kind of culture it is, and what, what kind of smart and caring people I want to work with. And at the end of the day, we're spending a lot of time with these people. Yeah. And, and so you have to respect them. You have to appreciate the knowledge and the time that you, the knowledge that they bring and the time that you spend with them. So that has been another reason why I joined, but also a reason why I continue to stay. And as I came on board, we knew that exactly was going through some transitions some growth from single product to multi-product platform play and pushing further into the enterprise. And there's some business transformation that has to happen across the company. And that includes how do you think more wisely about the talent and the diversity of your employee base, which really are the ones who represent the company and that customer focus or that excellence that you want to bring um, to prospects and to customers. So it starts at home with how we actually appreciate, support, hire, and develop diverse talent, and that includes women for sure. Yeah. And you must have been pleased to hear that exactly had started the, doing this research way back in 2014. Yeah. That was that was a time when people had a different, people were more surprised back in 2014. I think now a lot of people know that this has happened for a while, that women are underrepresented in sales in nearly every industry. You looked at a, a handful 
I think 10 or 12, I'm not sure the exact number, but in terms of the industries that you looked at, we found nearly every industry to be underrepresented in sales for women in business to business. And then as you go up through sales manager up to leadership, VP sales and higher, we have less and less women represented. But the short version of your study for 2024 is that women outperform men, women are more loyal, women are paid less, and women are underrepresented. Is that a good summary? Yes, that is. And I would add one more thing in there, which is the pay gap for women increases over the years. So while it may look like a couple of percentages when they first enter the workforce, that becomes exponentially larger and larger. And so it it is important, and I am proud of the fact that exactly started this research and continues to do it, because even as we make progress on behalf of women, we can't keep take our eye off the ball. The conversation needs to continue. It's not, hey, we accomplished something. Let's give ourselves a pat on the back, and now we can lean back. No, we have to continue to put our foot on the gas continue to highlight some of this and move the ball forward. And I think it's it's important that we use data in order to see what the correlations are, to get some of the insights. And, you know, it exactly has this data at our fingertips. And so it's part of our duty to bring that to the table for not only the conversation, but then to allow that conversation to seep into how do we convert that into sustainable, ongoing practices, not only within exactly, but across those eight, eight plus industries that we're talking about. And so I know people may feel they've heard it before and they know some of the information, but are we making the sustainable behavioral changes and the operational changes? that that are needed. Yeah. And just a little more about the data. It was a good sized data set with 37,198 salespeople. And it was eight industries from 2020 to 2023, covering 89 companies. And what I liked is that you worked in conjunction with the Steven Stagner Sales Excellence Institute at University of Houston and professors from Fowler College of Business at San Diego State universities. We have some good academic research going on there. And and nonetheless, we're at this point where we see that women are good performers and we see that they're underrepresented. I think one of the things I wanted to share with you is that I've been working with a number of different universities around the country and there are over 200 sales programs in colleges and universities. Not sure if you knew that. Wow. Yeah. I had a and there are many, many of them have, they participate in sales competitions. And what I noticed over the years, and a lot of the professors have corroborated it, is that the women are amazing. And if we end up with 10 finalists, at least five are women, if not more. If there are five finalists, there's always a woman in the mix in the finals. And it's because I believe it's because we, as women, we work hard, we put our head down, we do the extra credit. But it might be hard to transition that into business because in business, if you keep your head down, you miss out on all the, the networking that's going on with senior leaders and things like that. So I feel like There's a little bit of education that might need to go on with us as women as to be more successful in a male majority world, um, which is called business and sales in in specific. I I don't know if you have any thoughts about one of the things you've done is you looked at at exactly and you had women were promoted very well last year in the company, right? So mm-hmm. that's part of it is keeping people interested to stay with the company through promotion, knowing that I can get a promotion if I work hard or yes. and I'm not just passed over because my male peer is going to get the promotion. As many of us I've seen that I witness that myself, I was passed over for promotion because one of my coworkers was married with kids. And even though I was a single mom, 
apparently it was important for him to get the promotion when I didn't get mine. So wow. there are a lot of stories like that. And there are women that have been just fired before, during, and after pregnancy, all sorts of things. Um, you know, but, I, if I may, you bring fresh into my own experience around pregnancy and career opportunities. So I've got twins. They're 14 right now. And when I was pregnant, I knew I was going to take some maternity leave off, but I intended to come back, love my career, love working, intended to continue my profession. One day I had a leader say to me very genuinely, you know what, Megan, we're really going to miss you when you're gone. I don't know what we're going to do. So bummed. And I said, well, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> I'm going to tell you'll survive that the four months that I'm gone. And he looked at me puzzled and he said, well, you're not going to, you're not staying home. I, I thought you would, I thought you would stay home with the kids. And so he was very, he didn't mean it in a malicious right. way. It was yeah. a genuine way, but it, you, you wonder how many men have been asked when they're having children, oh, you're going to stay at home, right? <laughs> so I am thankful that he had that conversation and said that to me because what it led to was then conversation with my leadership team. And what I discovered was they were all talking about the fact that I probably was not coming back to work because I was having twins. And so they were making plans to backfill me. And when I said, hang on, I'm going to love my kids and I want to have a career, I, I want to come back from leave and continue to work. And they said, that's great. We love that. You know what? We'll help you out. We'll take some things off of your plate so it's easier. And I said, hang on. I don't want that either. Let me decide. Let me control right. it. Let me decide. When I have to, when I, it's too much, when I need help, let me be the one to raise my hand, but please don't take that away. Had that door and that conversation not been opened, things would have been taken out of my hands. And yeah. who knows? I would be today. But I was fortunate enough to get wind of that. I don't know that is the case for everyone. Exactly. But, yeah. But and, also and unfortunately in sales, it's complicated because we have commissions and bonuses. And if I have three deals that I'm, a, and, and I have talked to women in this situation, I talked to a woman who was in, in the delivery room trying to close a deal. Now, I don't encourage anyone to do that. We're so passionate about our, our prospects and our customers, and, and we want to work with them as long as we can. And so what sometimes happens is that you lose all your, you lose all your prospects when you go out on maternity leave, and then when you come back, you're starting at zero. And you may not have even closed any business. Sometimes managers will help a rep. And I don't want to make this all about maternity leave, but I just want to mention that in sales, it's, there's a, it's different than a lot of the other roles because that factors in and for man, sales managers as well. And that's mm -hmm. an issue that all companies need to figure out. So. Yes, absolutely. And I might be over, oversimplifying this, but I think for the purposes of illustration, I think of it as a team sport. Even as an individual sales rep who is leading the charge, there is there can be a collective team that supports some of that landing of the prospect. And so even as the person goes out on maternity leave, there's a contribution that they brought and there should be celebration of that contribution for that win, as opposed to focusing on the, what did they not finish up? Even the most, the biggest stars on a professional basketball team or soccer team or football team, they get subbed out at times. Are they shortchanged of the contribution that they had to the overall win? I don't think so. So. It's right. this thing, sport. We win yeah. together as a company. You know. When you talk about sport, I'm thinking about the Olympics because they're happening at the time of our recording. And 2024 is the first Olympics that has gender parity. So every sport for men, ha there's a sport for women as well. And the women are kicking butt and taking names. <laughs> that yeah. the U.S. Olympic, uh, the U.S. women are amazing. And I think they're going to have more medals than the men when all is said and done. Again, it's, it's not a competition to me between men and women, but 
if we let women go, we do a great job. And so why we wouldn't have more women in our pipeline. You were talking, we talked before we got on about building the pipeline. But I also, and I wanted to point out too, because I had seen this stat that within exactly, you promoted 36% of the women there in 2023. That helps retention, right? Yes. And the 36% of our promotions were women. It mirrored what our representation of women in the company are as well, which is a good thing. And I believe that is good and there is still work to be done. Like I, I said, I'll never stop saying that we have to be continuously focused on it, maniacal about it, about caring and then following through with some of the practices. So I'm very proud of the way that our leaders have showed up to recognize the women and I'm also proud of the work that my team and our extended leaders are doing in order to make sure that we've got the sustainable infrastructure and that DNA, if you will, within the company to, to weed out some of the disparities now and going forward. Sustainability yeah. is super important to me when it comes to this topic, because as you mentioned, there is a shortage across functions and especially in sales at the leadership level, at the management level in rep with the representation of women. And part of that is the, the broken pipeline. And so if we can solve for the pipeline, and that's why, as you were talking about the university programs, it brought a smile to fa my face because that's one of those things that will help the pipeline. Then we can solve more. And uh, I'm really proud of, I can't say enough of the work that we're doing to that end. Yeah, it needs to start young. It needs to, I've always said that sales needs a PR agent because sales has such a bad rap. That if you ask parents, do you want your child to major in sales at the university? They would say, many parents would say, no. Be, just because of all we've heard about sales. And yet sales is an honorable profession. And I know some of the most amazing people involved in sales who we're working to talk about the integrity of selling and what we would call good selling, not the bad things that people have heard. There's always outliers out there. Hopefully we can educate more women and men as they're younger to understand the, the value of, of a sales career and how yeah. it can be a real career because a lot of people don't know that, that it, it really is a career from, right. I, I've been in it all my life. So you know who needs PR? Cool. I would say women in sales. And I, I think it's just a fact that that the humble brag is received better by a male counterpart than by females. Yeah. But I think it's necessary for women to self-promote and master that humble brag as well so that we aren't hidden in the shadows. And likewise, I would say having the advocacy amongst other male and female leaders and peers in the organization to also be part of the PR for women in the workforce and women in sales. It's interesting that you bring in a PR because I do see that is if it's a one piece of advice that I would have for women in the workforce is yeah. learn to master some of that humble brag so that you get that recognition and that reward for the contribution and the value that you bring as well. Yeah. And you have a career in tech. Your background is tech. So you've been the only woman in the room probably more than a couple of times. Oh, yes. Good number of times and sometimes in a very uncomfortable way. Yeah. Um, I was just going to wrap up and just thank you for thank the company at large. So please thank the executives for doing this ongoing research. We, we really appreciate it in the women in sales community. And I will say that there are more women who are, and men who are helping talk up women in sales now than when I started uh, Women's Sales Pros back in 2015. Now there are a number of groups and communities and just organizations that help champion women in sales. So I, we're all going to see more of that. It's going to keep growing. And I want to make sure that people know that they can go to the Exactly website for uh, more information and more stats on your blog. And you're going to have an, it sounds like you're going to have a series of posts about this study, right? Yes. 
Yes, we are. And I would offer one more thing out there, which is yes. please don't be shy. Obviously, we love talking about this topic. We love solving for it too. So welcome live conversations and the reach outs from folks to continue that going forward. Let's okay. put the words into action and I want it to spread like wildfire. Fire. That is fantastic. Thanks so much, Megan Ackerson from Exactly. Love, love Exactly. Keep doing good things like this. We really appreciate it. And we'll share, as we see, we have a newsletter that goes out twice a month and we'll post when we see new posts from you about it. So thank Thanks. you so much. Thanks, Lori. And thanks for having the platform so that we can car uh, carry on the conversation. Appreciate you bet. Very. Right. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Conversations with Women in Sales. You can find all of our episodes at womensalespros.com forward slash podcast. Help us spread the word and let's change the face of B2B sales.